So do you see this big bummer for jobs? Maybe that's why one of the nation's largest unions just gave Hillary Clinton a big snub. Hi, everybody. I'm David Asin. Welcome to Forbes on Fox. The Teamsters voting this week to hold back endorsing anyone for president, telling Fox News they're planning to meet with candidates on both sides of the aisle, including Donald Trump. They haven't backed the Republicans since Ronald Reagan and George H. Bush. But some here say the dismal jobs picture may bring us back to the future. Are they right? Let's go in focus to find out with Elizabeth McDonald, Rich Carlgaard, Sabrina Schaefer, Mike Ozanian, Bill Baldwin, and Bruce Jackson. So, Mike, with these lousy jobs numbers, could the Teamsters actually go with a Republican? Yes, David, they absolutely could because the Teamsters understand the key to getting this economy going is getting the government off the back of the American people. The last two presidents that did that, Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton, gave us very strong economic growth. The Teamsters want the Keystone Pipeline built. They don't like the Cadillac tax and Obamacare. Okay. They're onto something here. So, uh, Bruce, we should mention that the Teamsters have support. We mentioned Ronald Reagan, but they have supported Republicans before. Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, twice they endorsed him. George H. Bush, that was the last time. That was back in 1988. By the way, they didn't endorse anybody in 96, so, so they may decide to do that. But uh, they want jobs, Bruce. Well, I think that the, the likelihood of them endorsing them, I mean, we've got a long way to go here, and I think generally uh, Clinton or Biden or whoever would support more labor causes. But on the issue of the uh, Cadillac tax that Mike brings up, you know, the Cadillac tax was designed to curtail these rich plans to curtail their benefits, and it's forcing employers to wow. spend money on lower cost wellness, and it leaves more money for wage increases. Oh boy, I, I just heard Emac groan at that one. We'll get back to that. But Rich, just look at the unemployment numbers and not the overall figure, which stayed the same, but the real, some people say the real underemployment rate is actually at 10%. That includes a lot of people who dropped out of the workforce, people who have part time jobs but want full time jobs. This is a dismal picture. It really is a dismal picture, and it's why the Teamsters' endorsement is, is up for grabs. Look, I think the Teamsters' reticence to support the Democrat or Hillary uh, has to do with that the Democratic Party is really split into a couple of factions. Uh, you could call them the Greens and the Blues. The Greens are for, uh, you know, they're coastal rich urban Democrats who are for every, you know, electric cars and all that kind of stuff. And they're against the very manufacturing jobs and the Keystone Pipeline that right. blue collar Democrats want and need. Yeah. And Sabrina, when Hillary came out against the Keystone Pipeline, which a lot of unions have endorsed because they want the jobs that go along with that, that really hurt her with the unions. Oh, absolutely. I think this is when the rhetoric is no longer sufficient for politics. I mean, look, the reality is that Democrats do a lot to talk about what's good for a working class, but Republicans want to make sure that people don't fall down to begin with. They want to make sure that there's you know, policies in place that give people more freedom and more opportunity. And you mentioned the Keystone Pipeline. The one that comes to my mind is the minimum wage, right? Democrats love to talk about raising the minimum wage. This is something that unions are behind, but we know that it's going to create an artificial barrier to entry. It's going to lead to a loss of jobs. If anything, Republicans Republicans would probably vote to lower the minimum wage, right, to create more opportunity. It's a perfect example in my book. All right. Well, Emac, let us be specific about what the Teamsters said. I want to read from their statement. The Teamsters sure. are going to work with and support any candidate who puts the needs of America's working families above the deep pockets of their corporate donors. You know, somebody who says he doesn't have any corporate donors is a Republican, and Mr. Donald Trump. Yeah, that's right. He's funding his own campaign with his yeah. own money. So, you know, yes, I think this is a really interesting development what you know by the way the Cadillac tax really hits the union health plans hard those union health plans are always going to be higher in costs and we should uh, mention by the way that Hillary Clinton after she uh, condemned the, the Keystone pipeline said she was in favor of getting rid of the Cadillac tax it kind of to subdue her criticism from from the unions but I don't think that's worked Emac. yeah this is what I need to explain just be just bear with me P cops and firemen and union workers are in very dangerous industries they often and have higher costs with their health plans sure. and you know they've you know may have ill spouses who are chronic to conditions like cancer uh, that's why the cost is so high you know the Keystone pipeline is such a key issue for the unions we're talking shovel ready jobs that would be paid for by the private sector that the Democrats are always mm -hmm. squawking about and Bill I'm just in that union statement from the Teamsters uh, where they mentioned a corporate door, I'm wondering if that was kind of a nod to Trump 
It might or might not have been, but I've got a different notion, which is that the Republicans are way too wishy on job creation, and they could change things with a radical proposal, such as how about enterprise zones for em new employers? If you add to the job total, and if you pay at least $15 an hour, then you should be totally exempt from all the rules, regulations, and litigation that right now are smothering employers. But Mike, that is the sort of deregulatory policies that we're not hearing anything from with the Democrats, particularly with Hillary Clinton. She's just talking about more regulations, whether it's pharmaceutical companies or with the Keystone Pipeline or whatever. And you're not hearing a strong enough opinion, in my opinion, about that from Republicans either, except for the likes of Cruz and also Fiorina. Cruz would do a great job of getting government out of the way. The Democrats like to play to this. I remember in the early 80s, some of them were trying to call themselves the Atari governments. They love, like the sort of centralized government planning that liberals and my former boss here, Bill, like. They want the government to dictate things. But then what happened with Atari, it blew up, and now it's owned by the French. Bruce, how significant, if the Teamsters do come out for Trump or some other Republican, uh, how significant would that be? The unions, of course, back in 1980 when they supported Ronald Reagan, they were much stronger than they are now. Well, I think given the Teamsters sort of history with, you know, sort of uh, legalities, we'll say, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. Be careful I do think when they you put... drive home tonight, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly right. But I think that the Democrats are gen general, generally support infrastructure, and they would be for that. And I think the endorsement might have been put in play for Republicans because Scott Walker's now out of the race. But Interesting. Yeah, we'll of course, Scott Walker has an anti-union record, or at least that's what they paint him as. Uh, but, Rich, you look at the labor participation rate, the people who've just dropped out of the market. We're at all-time highs with that, or at least going back 40 years. I, the, how can the Democrats get around talking about that? Won't that at least come up during a, a debate, a final debate, between the Republican nominee and the Democrat? Oh, for sure it will. But, you know, uh, the point was raised that the Republicans, uh, Mike raised the point that the Republicans are not doing a particularly good job of explaining where economic growth comes from. Yeah. So right now, you know, they have a golden opportunity, but I'm not, I don't have a lot of confidence uh, that they can hmm. make this case. Well, they could yeah. pull victory out of yeah. the jaws of defeat. By the way, I said labor participation rate is at a high. It's, of course, Sabrina, it's at an uh, all-time or 40-year low right now. Again, I'm just wondering, with, with a track record like that, how does they speak up what they've done with the economy over the past six and a half years. No, David, I think that's exactly the point. And I think Rich makes the point perfectly that, look, I don't think that Republicans have figured out how to talk to people on a personal or an emotional level. They're still talking about budget deficits. Right. What people want to know but, is, are they going to have a job? And you have to go right to the jugular on the Democrats' economic agenda, which is more labor regulation. Right, but that's I, what I, sort of puts this, all, all, this whole thing into a tailspin. Right, right, but I don't think the Democrats know how to talk to the American people either. I think people like the unions Fair are enough. sick and tired of right. this. Miss Jane Hathaway, you didn't build that kind of a scold, and Americans are <laughs> stupid, <laughs> right. as Jonathan Gruber has said, it is completely demoralizing what the economy and what the people have under this president okay. have endured. We're going to have to look up in our trivia book, uh, Jane Hathaway. That's a reference <laughs> to an old TV Hill show. Billies. Yeah, Okay, Beverly Hill. Yeah. Uh, Bill, the fact is the economy wasn't so great during the last presidential election, and look who won re-election. So, I don't know. Maybe the American public won't get it on this. I think the Republicans have done a very bad job of explaining how their policies are really about employing the middle class and not about making rich people richer. The Democrats are just winning that rhetorical mm. debate. Mike, final push question to you. Is Donald Trump going to get a Teamster endorsement? What do you think? No. No? Okay. <laughs> All right. That's the last word. You can get a lot more, by the way, of Donald Trump at a special edition of Cashing In that's at the bottom of the hour. Hey, Eric, I can't wait for this one. Hey, David, we're sitting down with Donald Trump, who's going to talk about the Oregon shooting and the bombing in Syria and how the president is mishandling both of those. Stick around. Thanks, Eric. We're going to be watching. But up here first, forget changing leaders in the House. Some here say nothing is going to change until lawmakers change the way they do business in the House. Some common sense solutions to end this beltway dysfunction once and for all coming next.